hello, it's Marnie Ginsberg of uh, Reading Simplified, and I'm testing out a new um, a new way of, of of doing Facebook Live, and we'll see if it it makes better sense to you. And this is all left to right. And today's short little snippet is um, called "This is not your father's Oldsmobile." I am just doing a short little tip about an old activity, a classic one, you've probably seen it a lot, but there is a twist that you can uh, give to this activity that will make it so much more powerful for your students, whether they're beginning or strugglers, um, in terms of their reading words, spelling words, and then even moving into comprehension. It's quite an amazing little, small little tweak. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Many of you probably have done an activity like this. I'm gonna model, this is kind of the classic way that uh, I see this written about in, in books and on blogs and stuff like that. So the teacher will say to the whole class, and everybody might have something like this at their desk, the teacher would say, okay, let's make the word cat. Maybe the kids do this part. And can you see that? Okay. And now the fun begins. The teacher will say, okay, take out the C and put in an S. Or no, put in an M. So the children are able to do that and then they need to read the word mat. So the teacher told them what to do, but then they are challenged by having to read the word. So that's good that they are asked to read the word but there's some things that they could do that would make this activity harder. Let me just go continue though. This is the classic way. So Matt, okay, then the teacher would say, well, now let's switch out the T and put in the D. So the teacher tells the student what to do. And again, then they would have to read the word mad. And if you're doing this whole group, um, what happens a lot of times is one or two kids read it first and everybody hears it, even if it's a whisper. So some kids might actually not be reading this word. By the way, um, I'm going to take a short break here and see if I can forward this into uh, our group. Well, I don't know if Facebook will let me do that. Maybe not, maybe not now. <laughs> I'm just testing out a new system. So the teacher can continue to do this where the child uh, is told what cards to switch. Okay, remove the, the M and put in the S. And then the child may, or the whole class may read the word. Again, sometimes they'll read it, sometimes they won't. So that's traditional. And there's this one tweak that I'd like you to make that will increase the child's cognitive flexibility. It increases the child's ability to phonemically manipulate um, sounds. Their ability to move things in and out of words is highly correlated with their ability to read unfamiliar words and their, their speed of reading words. So this cognitive flexibility can be developed by changing things up and having the student do the work. So I don't have a real word here. Let's make a real word. Okay, so this is the, the, the little tweak that I'd like for you to make. It's, thank you, Mariana. Uh, thank you, that's really awesome. You shared that to our group, I appreciate that. So we have cat, and then the teacher would say, let's switch cat to mat. And so now the student has to think, what's the difference between cat and mat, and they have to understand that the beginning sound is different, and they have to not only understand which one, what, what needs to be switched, they also have to um, figure out which sound represents the mm in mat. They also, of course, have to pull off the mm sound, they have to segment it and even know that mat begins with mm. So there's all these things that the student has to do when the teacher lets the student do the work. So the teacher could tell the student, change cat to mat, and then the student has to figure out what is the switch. And that subtle difference is, is probably, if you've not done it, it 
probably seems ridiculously small, but I find that over and over again with beginners who are three or four or five or six, or even um, experienced readers who are struggling at age 11 or 14 or even 17, I've done this even with an adult, this cognitive flexibility of pulling things in and out of words is a key that unlocks their decoding and their spelling. And so it's a very powerful strategy that I would like for you to consider if you haven't already tried this activity. Um, it's, I call it switch it. And it's very similar to activities you may have seen before, but the one twist of having the student do the work. Okay, so the student would be told, hmm, you have Matt. Now let's switch it to mad. And the student has to think, think, which one of these am I going to switch out? The student has to then do that. Then the student has to think, what sound do I hear at the end of mad? Mad. And then that student has to think which picture or spelling goes with that um, sound. Duh. So then they do that work themselves and they're developing that cognitive flexibility. It's phonemic manipulation and it's what you and I use if we come across a challenging word. Say I was reading something in Russian and, and it said uh, something like Dostoy. Ovsky, or and I would play around with it, Dostoevsky, and I would pull a sound out and I would try another sound until I hear something that sounds like a word that I've heard before. Oh, Dostoevsky. And even though I don't really know what those, whatever those letters are, I'm not sure that that's the right sound, sound, sound until I plug in something that makes sense. So this is some skill that is really helpful for kids of all ages. And it, like I said, it unlocks so much for reading and spelling. So what kids get out of it is they get really strong phonemic segmentation so that they can move from the ability to segment even simple CVC words like this, consonant, vowel, consonant, to much more complex ones like CCVCC, words like stamp, st, a, m, p. And they're able to do that really quickly with this activity because you're challenging them to do the work. Now I have to point out that when when the student is asked to switch from mat to mad, they're not actually reading the word. They have to figure this tricky stuff out. But the, if you've already said the word, then they're not reading it. So the other activity I told you about, remember, the student does have to read the word in that activity. So there is definitely value in that activity. But if you t um, make this tweak, I think you'll find it's more powerful and you can have them read words in other environments um, and still get a lot of opportunity there. But this activity, you can get so much more out of it by really developing their, their cognitive flexibility, their ability to pull sounds in and out of words. And that's really going to help them when they get into all the long vowels and other advanced phonics that are so tricky. Like they come to the word brown and that OW, they probably just learned it as O. And so they come to it and they say brone, but they know brone isn't a word. So what do they have to do? They have to pull out that O sound and they have to plug in an ow sound. Uh, and then they think, well, does brown make a word? So the whole time they are pulling from their meaning making brain, their, what, what words they already have in their vocabulary and they're merging it with these sound um, symbol um, processing abilities. And that's why, how they're able to quickly come to a word that makes sense. So this activity helps per students prepare to unite those systems that they don't have any interference with their phonemic segmenting and their ability to pull uh, and to read new words and to make meaning in the sentences that they're reading. So this activity um, I'm going to teach in depth starting on Sunday night in a free five day workshop. It'll just be maybe um, 10 to 15, maybe 30 minutes if there's lots of questions. Um, videos every night, just like this on Facebook Live, but I'll have a student who will be a volunteer. And some of you have probably participated in this in the past. We did this in November, it was a good success. And um, so let me just see if I can um, give you a link if you wanna learn more about this. Uh, free five-day workshop. Hmm, let's see. 
That I don't know if that's coming up. Like I said, I'm trying something new. I'll try, just in case that didn't work, I'll try, um, I'll try a different thing. Sorry, you guys. It's all technology is always a little crazy, isn't it? Especially when you try something new live. Who thought that was a good idea? There is the link. Hopefully that can work for you. Um, if not, if you go to readingsimplified.com and grab a, anything that you see there that's available. I have a lot of free worksheets and and resources. Um, if you do that, you'll get on my email list and I'll be sure to let you know about this free event. So what I'll be doing is teaching you how to do Switch It and I'll be working with the student live. And then I'm going to hope that you guys will work along with me with a student that you think might benefit from this, whether he or she is a beginning student or one who is struggling. And you can also use it with a group of students, but if you're just trying it out, it's kind of um, comfortable usually to try it with just one. So I think I am seeing some comments. Thank you both for sharing, both uh, Lisa and Mariana shared this, so that is great. If there are any other questions that come up later when this goes out, I will um, respond. So I hope that um, this, um, that this um, little blurb about why which this new activity and this one tweak can be so much more powerful than some of the classic activities that we may have done in the past and that you may really find some value in it. So thanks for popping in and um, oh, it popped and disappeared. I see. Okay. Well, too bad. Let's see. I'll try it again. I'm going to have to figure out maybe this one. Got another button here. Uh, oh, okay. I see. I have another choice. <laughs> And thanks. For, there we go. Hopefully that is showing up as a comment for you guys. Um, okay, there it is. Yay. Hopefully that'll be there from here on. So, so I'm trying this new thing. It's called Be Live TV. So if you are into Facebook Live, then this may be helpful. Oh, uh, great. And thank you for telling me it's a comment. So you notice that I don't have to um, show you things backwards. So that's one of the advantages of using this. All right. So that's it for today. Thank you guys for being here. And I hope to see you in the five day challenge starting Sunday, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern time. And we will teach you how to do switch it from the beginning to the end and how to see what progress you can make with just five or 10 minutes a day with one activity. Thank you, guys.